All right, welcome back to New Zealand, and welcome to Eastbourne. I'm on the other side of Wellington. Um, I guess this is still Wellington, technically, but I don't really know what I'm doing here. I'm just going to go for a ride, because it's been a long time, and I feel like I haven't actually just like shot a riding video in so long, so here we go. So I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody watching. Somehow I hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. I don't even know 10,000 people, but I guess 10,000 people know me, which is kind of crazy. I'm going to make a weird announcement in the next video, and I'm also starting the whole car conversion, the energy car project. So this channel is about to have a lot of cool stuff. I also wanted to thank all the Zero fans who commented on my DSRX video. I haven't received that much hate in a long time. I know it was really harsh on Zero, but there's a reason for that and I want to explain. I feel like that video needed to be made because nobody else was sharing the full picture of what Zero was about. You know, the, the new DSRX is probably pretty awesome. I haven't ridden it yet, but I guarantee it's really fun. So far I've ridden a DSR, an SR, actually a few SRs from different years. Uh, I rode an SRF and an FXE, which I wish I shot a video of because that was super fun. All of them, like. If I could sum up Zero Motorcycles overall, the word I'd use is fun, because they're super fun to ride. But that doesn't mean they're the best example of electric motorcycles that we have right now. And it definitely doesn't mean they're problem free. I started following this guy on YouTube called Mark's Travels, and his videos are super cool. He, he just got a Zero SRF, which is why I started following him, and he's attempting to ride around the world on it. And that's, I mean, that's super inspiring, right? Like all of us, that's kind of our dream. Like. I would love to do this, so right now, yeah, I'm just watching his videos, like, living vicariously through his trip. But anyway, unfortunately, he ran into the infamous zero state of charge problem, where the bike will display a battery percentage that's totally wrong. Like, it'll say it charged up to 100%, but it didn't at all. Or it'll say that it's close to 0% and you still have tons of range left. So, it's really hard to ride like that. And we've all known about this problem for a couple years since it started popping up people would update their firmware and then suddenly the bike was just acting crazy. But Mark had no idea what was going on, so he made a video about how frustrating this was. Problem is the software, I think. It tells me that the bike is full when it's actually not. I found that out yesterday. When the software told me the bike is full, it was actually just at like 60% or 70% at max. And that's just not okay. It's all a lie. This is a lie and this is a lie. What is that supposed to mean? Like, how can you even trust those gauges, really? That's so ridiculous. That's false data. That is where range anxiety comes from. Now everything is totally messed up. Like, I came here, I had like 5%. And now it's telling me it is already at 40%. I just plugged it in. Come on, guys, really? And I know Mark is just documenting his trip and he doesn't care if you buy an electric motorcycle or not, but I do. So this kind of stuff can't happen. You know, when the motor encoder died on my bike, I wasn't sure if I wanted to share this kind of, you know, negative stuff because I didn't want my experience with Zero to reflect all electric motorcycles, if that makes sense. And I get it, like, people are emotionally and financially invested in these bikes because they bought them and nobody wants to hear somebody talk negatively about your own bike or that company, you know? But what it comes down to is, if I was going to buy a new bike, would I want to know the good and the bad? Would I want to hear what a previous owner had to say about their experience with this bike? I was a previous owner for six years, and as much as I tried to share only the sunshine and rainbows, I started feeling disingenuous. Like I was selling people on a utopia where everything was perfect when it wasn't. Because my experience with Zero was awesome until it wasn't. I have an analogy for this. Say you love eating pizza from this one restaurant but you don't know about the cockroaches in the kitchen. Do you want to know about the cockroaches in the kitchen? Do you want to know what's in their sauce? Nobody's really talking about this kind of stuff. And I, I mean, I want people to eat the pizza, right? But I want people to know that that restaurant doesn't represent all pizza. And we have other options. In my opinion, the pizza in Italy tastes better. <laughs> so every year when Zero brings out a new bike, the upgrades aren't big enough to make me want to buy another one and they aren't convincing current Zero owners to trade in their old bikes. 
the new ones just aren't that much better. I mean, build quality, yes, and components, sure, everything's, everything's a lot better than they used to be. But the core, you know, the range, the charging, like, the practical capability of the bike hasn't really changed. A lot of people picked on me for using the highway range, and they're like, yeah, but this bike could get way more miles off-road. And it's like, well, yeah, the old DSR could also get way more miles off-road. So, that, I mean, you're missing my point. The thing people care most about is range. And if that hasn't changed, and the battery and the charging is the same, then we have a problem. I think my biggest problem with this is that Zero hasn't built an electric motorcycle that can replace a gas bike. This is aimed toward adventure riders, but who would sell their BMW GS for a bike that takes two hours to charge and has super limited range? And it's not just going from gas to electric. Way too many of my friends have sold their Zeros and gone from electric back to gas. And what's frustrating is, I understand why. We've just been asked to make too many compromises. Zero wants people to change the way they ride, and I don't think that's okay. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to ride at 15 miles per hour just to get the range they claim. Okay, this video has turned into a rant, and I totally didn't mean to be so negative about this. But people are taking electric motorcycles on actual road trips now. And when they struggle, it changes their attitude about electric vehicles, like maybe this isn't the future, when it has to be. We have to go electric. You guys have probably heard that we're voting for a ban on the sale of new gas-powered vehicles in 2035, right? I know California wants to pass it, some other states, uh, a lot of countries in Europe and the UK. So it's even more important that we have electric equivalents of all internal combustion motorcycles. If countries and states go ahead with this ban, we're going to have 13 more years until the only new vehicles allowed to be sold will be electric. And I'm excited because if you look back 13 years ago, the best electric motorcycle we had was a 30 horsepower dirt bike with a realistic 40 miles of range. Now we have these electric super bikes that accelerate faster than anything else. So just imagine what another 13 years of innovation can do to these things. That is if we keep innovating. If electric motorcycles don't keep advancing every year and we're stuck with minimal upgrades and bold new colors, come on. This is why I'm so critical of Zero and that sums up why I bought a different bike. There's so much more to say on this topic, so I might actually make another video about it. But to sum up, I feel like we need to talk about the pizza. We need to make the pizza better. And people should know that they have more pizza options these days. If you're still listening to me ramble, uh, in my next video, I have a surprise for you. I'll be unveiling a new bike. That's all I'm saying, another cliffhanger. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.